You know, there's a lot of heroes out there under Marvel and DC, but there are some heroes that are damn near direct copies with slight differences in power or origin story just to avoid going to court or a lawsuit. Sup, Chaos here, and today I'll be looking at some surprising copycat characters from Marvel and DC. Some of them you already had an idea about, and others are pretty much clones of each other. It's, it's crazy. Just like our first comparison, Hawkeye and Green Arrow. Now listen, I know th these two have like some big fan bases, maybe not so much of H Hawkeye. Um, <clears throat> Green Arrow though, my God, that dude is badass. But I mean, come on, these guys are uh, copy and paste. But their lore, that's different. Oliver Queen, Clint Barton, they're the cooler version of Robin Hood, who both take advantage of their fucking aimbot. Like these two would be gods in the Game of Thrones universe. Of course, none of them actually possess any superpowers. Like, come on, you can see it here. Like they can actually just hold their own if needed with hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is impressive. It gives you more of a practical approach to fighting. It is impressive though, the amount of high-tech gadgets they have. <laughs> like where are these things spawning from? We got grappling hook arrows. We've got explosive arrows. There's some smoke arrows too. And there's a lot to see from Green Arrow from that one animated series. God, this show is goaded. There's a 22 year difference between the two, but we're talking about their comic book release. Strangely, it's giving me some weird Leonardo DiCaprio dating vibe <laughs> with that sort of age gap. Hawkeye from 1962 and Green Arrow being the first in 1941. Not sure about you, but there was like some sort of weird dislike for Hawkeye though. But maybe that was just me, you know, with him just being human. I started liking the character a little bit during Endgame. Like they gave him a purpose, a reason to become the Ronin. But then when he had to like, you know, push Natasha off that cliff, it's <laughs> kind of started to like, not really with this guy. <laughs> Scarlet Joe. But I have heard a lot of good things about Green Arrow and his TV show. If I had to rank these on the list of who is the better counterpart here between Marvel and DC, I'm putting Green Arrow on top. Still gotta watch the show though. And speaking of TV shows, up next we've got The Flash. And his surprising counterpart in the Marvel Universe would be Quicksilver. I could have called this one from a mile away. But trust, there's heroes with copycats that you wouldn't even think of. Like some of the originals might even be the copy. But I'm sure we all know Quicksilver jacked Flash's swag faster than you can say. Hey. But yet, Quicksilver is much slower. Well, the, the Flash is just on extreme god levels of speed. Of course, getting his powers granted to him by the Speed Force. But with Quicksilver, he was born with his mutant powers. I mean, come on, imagine just zipping around your playpen when you're like four years old or something. I mean, with both of these guys on screen right now, delete everything you have in your brain, who would be the fastest just by look? Crazy how much more popular the Flash has always been until that little movie, X-Men Days of Future Past. Oh, the, the, one of the best. That movie was released and Quicksilver had one of the, the best running hero scenes I've Ever seen and he never tripped once and don't even get me started with the behind the scenes footage I, I watch that just casually sometime now that flash movie um yeah whew. yeah we don't really fuck with the actor who played uh the movie version of him <laughs> and those running scenes were goofy as f <laughs> hey listen i don't judge or anything <coughs> And also every iteration of DC, like the animated series, movies and films are just the better option. With a live action Flash movie coming out after Days of Future Past, like you would think they would, I don't know, make the Flash scenes cooler or like just a better visualization of how fast he's actually going. Like it really doesn't seem realistic how his arms are flailing the way they do. But minus all of that, the Flash still remains on top as one of the most iconic heroes and the fastest. But hey, you guys can decide who's your favorite one. I'm still thinking about that race between the Flash and Superman, which leads me to the next copies, Superman. Man. Now I'm sure we all love this chiseled chin geek. I mean, you know, geek cause he wears glasses and whatnot. But his obvious counterpart being the Captain Marvel, which does have a fascinating history, originating not with Marvel though, but with a comic book called Fawcett Comics in 1940. The original Captain Marvel was Billy Benson, a boy who transformed into a superhero. And yeah, we did get a movie about that. But imagine transforming by saying just a few magical words. Yeah, my dude was playing Timmy Turner and got superpowers. But, but wait, someone's gotta get sued up in this bitch. Fawcett Comics faced a lawsuit from a company called National publications which <laughs> later becomes DC Comics. They literally pointed the sharpest finger accusing Captain Marvel of being a Superman ripoff. And I mean come on like just put them in a locker room together and like you couldn't tell them apart. Not really sure what they'd be doing in a locker room. And I'm recording you. Oh that's so cool. See but guess who lost that lawsuit? Fawcett Comics did. They had to stop the publications and they had to pay DC for all the damages. And this let a giant window open for Marvel Comics to swing in and they acquired the Captain Marvel name in 1967 which I mean it, it makes sense it's Marvel Comics. Marvel like, come on, dude. But we fast forward to 1972. DC Comics was plotting and they bought the rights to use Captain Marvel from Fawcett. But we're just talking the aesthetics, the swag. So they got the character of Billy Benson, but had to change his name to Shazam, which honestly is way cooler than Captain. I mean, hey, if you were born in the 80s, imagine being called Shazam. You would never get bullied. Funny how this is the biggest beef in comic book history. Of course, we did get a Captain Marvel film later on. You know, Carol Danvers, uh, Brie Larson. <clears throat> 
love, lovely person, great actress. She seems to be super hated though, like as a person, I guess. Um, but it also seems like Marvel didn't do a good job with her writing or even her origin story. I mean, I like the movies for, for reasons, but I mean, we know they could have written that way better. <laughs> Next up, we've got Thanos. <laughs> Listen, okay, I know it's Thanos, so I just wanted to see if you catch me off guard there. But whoever might be a huge fan of Thanos might be super disappointed knowing that he is not the original. He was heavily inspired by Darkseid. You know, the DC dude with the laser eyes. Laser you. Just by looking at these guys side by side, you can see how thick they are. I mean, how similar they are. Most of the time, Darkseid rocking that weird dress and his helmet that really makes him stand out. And then we got Thanos with that gold helmet and his more notable Infinity Gauntlet that he wears. Thanos has that beefy chin while Darkseid covers his up. I think he's aware that he's hideous. It's also kind of strange how they're both like intergalactic villains who just want to wipe the slate clean, destroy all humanity as we know it. I mean, of course, Thanos wants to wipe out at least half of the population. Personally, I do love the Justice League films, like the black and white one, of course. Thank you, Schneider. But Darkseid wants to accomplish his takeover of the universe with the anti-life equation, which seemed more of a compelling story than Thanos's. Like Thanos seemed really geopolitical, you know, trying to wipe out only half of the population so the rest can thrive. But I'd say he's cheating using the Infinity Gauntlet and shit. Like that doesn't belong to you. In 1970, Darkseid made his appearance, which does make him only three years older than Thanos. But hold on, it's crazy to think with Darkseid still big brothering Thanos, Thanos did appear in live action movies first. And the cinematic version of Thanos is way, like, oh man, 10, 20 times better than the, whatever the f they decided to do with this. The laser eye thing though, that's okay. Now, whether you're a DC fan or not, I don't know if we should get into that. Start some wars in the comments, but you choose who is the better villain, Darkseid or Thanos? Thanos, I know what I'm saying. And truly, there's only one person who can defeat Thanos. Come on, let's play a game. It's the only one who's a billionaire playboy philanthropist. And He's got an attitude sometime. And the saddest death scene ever in the Marvel Universe, Iron Man, okay? Dude, that final snap that he did to, to save the entire universe is insane. This is not a spoiler, okay? The movie came out <laughs> exactly. But of course, there's a counterpart, a copycat, if you may, from DC. A man by the name of John Henry, also known as Steel. Crazy to think how he's got two first names and he's bald. But Steel is a genius billionaire and engineer who designs advanced weapons for the government. <laughs> like, come on, if this is not copy and paste. But after the death of Superman, Superman, and the whole of Metropolis caught in a gang war, Steel decides to take his knowledge and his money to create a powerful armored suit in Superman's honor. Like, yo, this thing is pimped out all chromed, even showcases the Superman logo of hope on his chest. Also, he can provide saving to anyone who needs it. Steel is a bit of a youngster introduced in 1993 by DC Comics, and I would say their looks mirror exact looks of Iron Man. Of course, Stark was created 30 years earlier in 1963. It's kind of like shocking how sometimes these characters were created way, way back before I was even a fetus. But of course, while Steel remains humble and caring, we've got Stark, of course, and Robert Downey Jr. giving Iron Man that charisma and a bit of an ego that set these two characters apart. Now, it would be kind of cool to see Steel in like animated series as well as live action. So who knows, maybe we'll get that. Hopefully people don't actually mistake him for Superman himself. But to see a crazy chrome tech suit with the Superman logo flying around fighting crime would be the best thing for live action. I in my opinion, of course, I again, I don't really know what I'm talking about. Like he's black and bald. That will be me someday. And maybe I'll even play the part. Also, I'm a bit jealous of Tony Stark's invention of Jarvis. I mean, imagine having a personal assistant just kind of doing whatever you need. A slave. And it's also sad to think that Jarvis is later killed by Ultron. And then somehow Jarvis and Ultron fuse together in a weird amalgamation becoming Vision. And in this copycat war, there's an intriguing twist with the similarities of Vision and Red Tornado. And no, I'm not racist, but they're both red. They're what? cape wearers. And yo, I'm actually against capes, 100%. I mean, there's that one scene in Incredibles where, you know, wearing capes bad. But yeah, Vision and Red Tornado, both bald androids. It, it kind of freaks me out. I mean, in a weird way, I'm not really sure how these character's powers even work with them being androids. I mean, let's just showcase Vision's power here of just being able to go through walls and whatnot. Oh, wait, that's right. He's got that that Infinity Stone on his head. So, oh, wait, actually, that all makes sense. But for Red Tornado, him creating a tornado as an android, someone's gonna have to work out the details for me. But Vision's character predates Red Tornado's first appearance in 1968. <laughs> like, goddamn, they're nearly 30 years apart. But hey, there's more of a twist. The original Vision was not an android, but a pale alien police officer. <laughs> it reminds me of Seth Rogen 
and invincible. But it wasn't until 1968 that Vision was reimagined completely into a form closely resembling Red Tornado. So oh, hold on, the 1940s Vision came first, but then was reimagined to look more like Red Tornado. That was, yeah, that's hmm. who's copying who at this point? I mean, hey, personally, I do really like Vision from the Marvel movies. In a weird way, I love his origin story. And I did tear up when Thanos snatched that stone from his brain. It was really devastating. He was all right. He was cool in the <laughs> WandaVision. That was okay. Uh, but just knowing that the actor who plays Vision was actually the voice of Jarvis from 2008, it mind blows me still. And Red Tornado, uh, I know he's super popular, but I never really knew him much in depth. So, I mean, you guys can rank them both on a scale of one to 10, not just power wise, but by their looks. I mean, who knows? I don't think Wanda was tripping when she decided to marry an android, you know? I know another couple like that actually, but hey, don't worry. We'll take a look at Scarlet Witch later in this video and find out if she's the original or copycat. But next up, we've got the Black Spider. I, he's not black, but he's somewhat like a spider. Uh, he was introduced by DC in 1976, which seemed like an attempt to rival Marvel's Spider-Man. But hey, I mean, we, we know how old Spidey is. This might shock you, but yeah, from 1962, that's when Spidey first appeared. And you know, while both characters do share some abilities, like the whole web slinging and climbing onto surfaces, their backgrounds and powers are significantly different. Originally, the swindler named Eric Newton, who accidentally killed his father, the Black Spider turned into a vigilante after his arrest. And this contrasts to Spider-Man's ethical background and stance. I mean, the Black Spider, he doesn't really have any genuine superpowers. He's more human than anything. Relies on his combat skills and marksmanship, utilizing the best weapon of all, a pistol. <laughs> Batman would hate this fucker. And of course, in contrast, we know Spider-Man shows off his superhuman strength, agility, and healing factor. Oh yeah, he can also lift 10 tons. I feel like they don't really showcase that enough, especially in the live action. I mean, their suits are somewhat the same as well, but despite that, the characters' powers and stories suggesting that there's more than just a mere imitation. But it is weird for DC to release a Spider-Man character after how popular Spider-Man became. There's about a 10 year age gap here, but I don't know, seeing a more human Spider-Man who uses pistol would be kind of interesting. But we swing into the next comparison. Like DC and Marvel historically have follow a strategy where if one of the companies have a popular character, the other would create a similar one. Whether there's a crazy year gap or not, it's pretty noticeable. And this was the case with DC creating Zantana in response to Marvel's Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff. Yeah, she's got that show, like I said, with Vision. Both Santana and Scarlet Witch are powerful sorcerers with the ability to cast spells, create illusions, and manipulate reality. Oh yeah, let's not forget uh, telekinesis, manipulation, you know, everything that um, a woman possesses as powers. God, it's making me want to switch sides. But they both have rich magical family backgrounds, and there's a reason why I really like the X-Men series. Like, they really dive into some really heavy political shit, like mutants being treated as, like, second or even third class citizens. Of course, we see this greatly with Scarlet Witch being a part of the X-Men at one point, but if anything, Zantana might be a legit copy of Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch debuting in March of 1964, and Zantana following her in the same year in November. I mean, the winner for me at least is still Scarlet Witch. Come on, character, actress, I, you, come on. There's no debate here. Yo, if you can't get enough of the magic in the room, you got two characters who seamlessly are the craziest sorcerers in comics. Because I was surprised to find that Doctor Strange was heavily inspired by DC's Doctor Fate. Doctor Strange, Doctor Fate, they're doctors. They did doctor work at one, yeah. Until a horrible accident happened. I mean, come on, they're also both old. I, I don't want to judge or anything. Age is just a number. But the older you are, the more stronger in magic you are. Or at least that's how I think of it. The similarities in appearance, spell, casting like my god they're jesters they're they're both doing like naruto hand signs at this point even the similarities with the magical artifacts are just like undeniable at this point i mean in the video games that i played like in justice dr fate's hand gestures are just way cooler like they're just more snappy to the point you know i wish i knew more about his character and it was actually pretty cool to see him in the live action black adam film like god damn look how shiny that helmet is i would shave my beard in his reflected helmet but we've got dr fate first appearing in 1940 compared to doctor strange debuting in 1963 just one year after Spider-Man. I, again, did not realize how early these characters were created, but despite this, hold on, wait a minute, Doctor Strange is still considered the coolest and more popular of the two. But don't be fooled, they are both hailed as the most powerful magicians in each of their universes. Quick little shout out to the Doctor Strange 2 movie. That movie was actually amazing. Maybe because directed by Sam Raimi or the fact that it felt rated R and just, it was dark, you know? Oh man, that was such a good movie. <laughs> Possibly the last good 
Marvel movie. It's kind of crazy to think that Mr. Fantastic made an appearance in that Doctor Strange 2 movie. And of course, Mr. Fantastic has his counterpart, Plastic Man. Like these two have been heavily debated as in who is the better stretchy being. As we know, Reed Richards, AKA Mr. Fantastic is the leader of the Fantastic Four with that amazing blue ass suit. Shit, we're gonna see a live action of that here soon. Not really sure how I feel about the actor playing him, but regardless, his ability to stretch his body significantly is all thanks to cosmic ray exposure. Like my dude literally stood out in the sun way too long. But hey, hold on, he's not just like a human rubber band or anything. He is Marvel Universe's smartest man using his intellect and flexibility in combat. Yeah, it sounds like that one yoga teacher I had that one time, but imagine making yourself a deadly fucking slingshot that, <laughs> or just being able to like ricochet rockets off your skin. But on the other hand, we have Patrick O'Brien, AKA Plastic Man, who's gained his shape-shifting abilities from a chemical accident, allowing him to transform into any form and withstand nearly any damage, even nuclear weapons and explosions. I mean, fuck, in this aspect, I Plastic Man might be a, a lot more indestructible. While they do both possess remarkable stretching and durability powers, Plastic Man has unlimited density control, which gives him an edge in physical combat and flexibility. But check this out, with Mr. Fantastic's superior intellect, he would be able to outmaneuver Plastic Man indefinitely, or even just figure out a way to, I don't know, freeze Plastic Man or neutralize his stretching powers completely. Like, trust me, Mr. Fantastic would be the Batman of his universe, planning 20, 30 steps ahead. But I don't know, what are your thoughts? The man in red or Monkey D. Luffy. I mean, that's a whole different category, but still, it's between these two. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of nonsense online. Nonsense that might be true. Speculations that Mr. Fantastic might make an appearance in the Deadpool movie. You know, that one with Wolverine? Oh, just can't wait for that. But, which leads us into our next character copycat. Deadpool and Deathstroke. This one's a lot more obvious, but only wanted to reveal it now because both of my favorite villains. Well, Deadpool, we, we kind of know what his deal is. While not a traditional hero, Deadpool is a fan favorite. I mean, it's either they really love Deadpool or Ryan Reynolds. I, well, maybe they're the same person. Either way, he is often associated with his humor and in the comics with his anti-hero traits. Originating in 1991, Deadpool was heavily inspired by DC's Deathstroke or Slade or, or whatever Robin liked to call him back then. Loved him in Teen Titans. He was always a mystery, you know? Even being able to fight Deathstroke in Batman Origins in like one of the first missions was the coolest fucking thing ever. But Deathstroke did come first in 1980, his name being Slade Wilson. And of course, we all know Deadpool's name, uh, Wade Wilson. This is goddamn near copy and paste. It's like Deadpool was playing a joke on this character, crossing over into his universe and stealing his signature. And that's the main reason why Deadpool stands out for me. He's able to break the fourth wall and he's aware of it, knowing that he's in a comic or even in live action movies. They do have similarities though, with their backgrounds as military experiments, some regenerative abilities, and their mercenary lifestyles. But despite those similarities, Deadpool has evolved into a distinct and arguably more popular character than Deathstroke. I do have to give it to Slade though. His his outfit, especially in that Origins game, God is it badass. Even him making that one appearance in that Justice League movie, that was a cool suit too. But apparently we're getting a, a brand new Deadpool suit in his movie coming up soon. I'm still a bit surprised, but I think some of your guys' votes for Deadpool or Slade will pretty much be like mine. I'm going Deadpool all day. He's got a bag of Hold'em where he can pretty much pull out any item he wants. A teleportation belt, he can time travel. He's kind of funny, he's annoying sometimes as well. But breaking the fourth wall and his healing factor has always been like something that really draws me into Deadpool. And for other people, uh, Ryan Reynolds would be that thing. <laughs> but whether they're all copies from each other or not, it seems like each character slowly becomes their own. And honestly, if I've missed any characters that do have a counterpart or just a straight copycat, let me know if I missed any, because I really want to dive into this more and make another video for you guys. But until then, click here on screen to check out gaming videos that I've made on some of the characters I've mentioned.